In this presentation, we will review the Cortex-A8 and discuss TI's offering. The Cortex-A8 is a 32-bit RISC processor based on ARM Core version 7. It supports a standard 32-bit instruction set and the Thumb 2 instruction set. Thumb 2 is a mixed 16- and 32-bit instruction set which provides better code density while maintaining 32-bit-like performance. The Cortex-A8 has a 13-stage execution pipeline and supports dual fetch, dual issue, and line execution. It has two levels of cache. Level 1 consists of 16 kilobytes of instruction cache and 16 kilobytes of data cache. Both Level 1 instruction and data cache are four-way set associative caches. Level 2 has 256 kilobytes of unified cache, which is eight-way set instruction multiple data architecture coprocessor. It has three processing pipelines to process integer or fixed point data, single precision floating point data, or IEEE vector floating point data. The NEON can either have 32 64-bit wide registers or 16 128-bit wide registers. The NEON media processor can work on data elements that are 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit in size. Cortex-A8 is supported by the Giselle Runtime Compilation Target, which improves performance and code density of just-in-time and ahead-of-time compiled code. It also supports dynamic branch prediction, which is 95% accurate. Let's look at how the ARM family has progressed. We have different implementations of the cores shown here. As you can see, the Cortex-A8 has the highest frequency, but also take note of the Drystone MIPS, which is a processor efficiency indicator. As a point for comparison, you will see that the Drystone MIPS per megahertz for the ARM9 and ARM11 architectures are about each one Drystone MIPS per megahertz. The Cortex-A8 is a two Drystone MIPS per megahertz architecture, further indicating the additional performance that can be achieved with this architecture. You will also see that the Cortex-A8 now features Thumb 2 support, and also from an instruction set architecture perspective, there is no mode switching required in programming to go between the 16 32-bit instructions. So let's delve into understanding Drystone and ARM's core performance. Drystone is a short synthetic benchmark. Um, these benchmarks are create it through simple programs that are carefully designed to statistically mimic some common set of programs. These programs are intended to be representative of some system integer programming. The Drystone benchmark contains no floating point operations. Drystones per second is the metric used to measure the number of times the program can run in a second. Drystone tries to represent the result more meaningful than MIPS because MIPS cannot be used across different instruction sets, for example, RISC versus CISC, for the same computation requirement from users. Thus, the main score is supposed to be more reflective of true performance. Drystone loops per second. Another common representation of the Drystone benchmark is DMIPS, Drystone MIPS, obtained when dry, the Drystone score is divided by 1,757, which is the number of Drystones per second obtained on the VAX 11780, nominally uh, a one MIPS machine. Okay, so with that as the background, this slide compares three of TI's ARM cores that are in our por portfolio. We have the Cortex-M3, the ARM9, and the Cortex-A8. From a speed perspective, the Cortex-M3 is at the lower level um, because it primarily targets microcontroller applications that just don't require that high degree of complexity. But as you can see, this core is still very efficient and oftentimes is more efficient than the ARM926. However, the ARM 926 offers a higher degree of performance, which places it in somewhat of a sweet spot between the Cortex-M3 and the Cortex-A8. By comparison, you'll see that the Cortex-A8 offers significantly more performance than the ARM 926 with the same frequency. 
The next few slides will highlight TI's Cortex-A8 based processors. On this one in particular, you'll see that we're highlighting the AM37X generation, which was released earlier this year and targets applications such as smart connected devices and patient monitoring. For the first time, we're able to reach up to 1 GHz of Cortex-A8 performance with the NEON coprocessor. You might remember from previous slides that this means that we have roughly 2,000 DMIPS of performance, which helps out with OS implementations such as WinCE, Linux, and RTOS support. Additionally, we have a 3D graphics accelerator on chip that helps with that 3D processing needed for cool and robust GUIs. Also listed here are the various peripherals that are available on chip. You can see that there's USB 2.0 on the go, um, USB high speed host, there's support for um, MMC and SD cards, as well as a dual 10 bit um, digital to analog converter to help control LCD screens. From a power perspective, the AM37X employs a dynamic voltage and frequency scaling to help with the power management. So total power on for this device is 735 megahertz with standby power at about 0.1 milliwatt. There are different package options that you can see listed here, but I specifically want to highlight the package on package option. So this option allows you to conserve real estate space um, by allowing you to put the memory right on top of the device itself. Also um, interesting to highlight here is the via channel array technology, which allows you to route using a 0.8 millimeter using 0.8 millimeter pitch rules, despite the chip's 0.65 millimeter pitch. Next, the AM35X generation of devices target applications such as industrial automation and point of service, and this was TI's first implementation of this core for the industrial space. The core runs up to 600 megahertz and also has a 3D graphics accelerator. The listing of peripherals is shown here, but some of the differences to note from the previous generation of devices include the additional PHY that's paired with the USB 2.0 on the Go peripheral, and the CAN controller, which is also included on chip, as well as a 10100 Ethernet Mac. The peripherals also um, support both a 1.8 volt or 3.3 volt I.O., so there's additional flexibility there. Um, from a package perspective, there is a one millimeter pitch package option that's available for this device. The next generation of devices that feature the ARM Cortex A8 based devices is the OMAP 35X. There are four different devices within this generation the OMAP 3503, the OMAP 3515, the OMAP 3525, and the OMAP 3530. The ARM core goes up to 720 megahertz on these generation of devices and also features a 3D graphics accelerator only on the OMAP 3515 and the OMAP 3530 instances. If you don't need to do 3D graphics or if you don't need the 64X Plus DSP and video acceleration, then the device that's best for you is the OMAP 3503. These devices are targeted toward portable navigation, portable media players, advanced consumer electronics, digital video cameras, portable consumer electronics, digital video cameras, point of sale, etc. The supporting operating systems are shown here. All of TI's hardware and software are released with Linux support in mind. The Linux support comes through the community with code pulled and pushed through the Git tree. We try to stay in parallel with the Git tree, but we also understand that you might be more familiar with commercial Linux versions, so we have uh, support in place for that as well. We also recognize that Android is a very popular standard and we're working on both commercial and community versions and you can see here the timeline for those. Uh, right now we currently have uh, available the OMAP 35X support and we'll soon have support available for the other two generations. When CE support is also available for our devices, we work with the Microsoft Gold Partner to develop board support packages for WinCE. So available to you is the OS, the board support, and you can see the timelines listed here for the operating systems. These last columns 
that are basically in red show information on the availability for our real-time operating systems. All of the ones listed here are currently either supported or we do have plans to support these in place for the future. On TI's website, we have proof of concept demonstrations and example software available to download for free. And you can see that we have more information listed here on the slide. So at a very high level, this slide summarizes the evaluation boards and development kits that are available. You can see here the various part number and prices as well as where the availability is through. So as you can see, most of them are available through TI's um, eStore, but many of these options are also available through distributors as well. So for those who are very early in their development cycle, there are community board and modules available. These are not sold through TI, but they're sold through the community. And these boards are, uh, as you can see, very, very low cost. They have limited functionality um, in comparison to the other evaluation modules on the previous slide. But they
The Advanced Features window provides controls for face detection and recognition, as well as motion detection. Another advanced feature is privacy masking, which allows a user to mask a set region of the image or area around a detected face to alleviate privacy concerns.